In the everlasting battle of the Bulls versus the Bears, there seems to be two questions at the front of everyone's mind. Who is going to win, and how can I profit off of this? Now, I don't know about all of you, but my DMs have been flooded with comments saying, Brendan, have you not seen all the bearish evidence on Bitcoin like a head and shoulders forming? Or the vice versa, saying, Brendan, have you not seen all the bullish evidence on Bitcoin like a giant bull flag forming? So it gave me the bright idea of what if we do a bit of a battle royale, a battle to the death where we put all the bearish evidence against all the bullish evidence, we pin them up against one another, and we see which way is Bitcoin actually most likely to explode in. Is Bitcoin going to see immediate new lows, or does Bitcoin have the potential to break out to new highs? So today we're going to be discussing all the bullish and all the bearish evidence about Bitcoin, and then I'm going to be giving my personal opinion about which way I am leaning on Bitcoin, and how I'm handling this situation. So if that sounds interesting, all that I ask is that you stick around for the video, and if you like it, consider hitting the like and subscribe button. But let's go ahead and dive on in here. Let's cut right to the chase and talk about this. Because again, <laughs> I'm getting pulled both ways in the DMs. So let me just start off with the bullish evidence here. Now clearly, I think that this is a textbook bull flag on Bitcoin, and let me explain why. We moved up here from a about $20,000 all the way up to $30,000, right? So we have this big move to the upside. And now that we've had this big move to the upside, we are consolidating. And the method in which Bitcoin is consolidating from $30,000 down to $25,000 is via a falling channel. Now I'm sure you're asking, why does this matter? And what I wanna do here is I actually just wanna go up and simply type in bull flag. So if we type in bull flag on Google, I don't want there to be any kind of confusion about this. I don't want to see anyone in the comment section being like, you don't know what a bull flag is. So let's just look at this. It is essentially just a move to the upside and we can go through a bunch of examples. It's just a move to the upside followed by, I guess one of the ways to can, you know, to identify a bull flag is a move to the upside following channel to the downside. And what that means is that we have a bullish pull with a bullish flag combo. So we see an example of this right here. Uh, we have another great example of this here. Again, move to the upside, uh, falling channel to the downside, and so on and so forth. Again, there's just countless examples of bull flag versus bear flags, yada, yada. I hope you're all starting to get the picture. Um, this is what a bull flag looks like. So let's go back to the Bitcoin chart. We have our large move to the upside here, falling channel of consolidation, falling parallel channel, and that's all that we're doing is we are moving from resistance or from support to resistance, back to support, back to resistance, back to support, and now it's bouncing here. So we have a nice little falling parallel channel. So I think that a lot of people can agree on this end saying this is a pretty clear and obvious bull flag. Um, now the next thing is people are saying, no, you're mislabeling it as a bull flag. This could actually be a head and shoulders, which is a reversal pattern. So that raises a lot of other eyebrows, but again, we'll get into that once we start the bearish segment of this uh, Bitcoin analysis. Now, the next thing to kind of look at is, has a trend reversed for Bitcoin? Because if we look at the bulk of last year, obviously it was a big old downtrend, right? Bitcoin fell from 70,000, all the way from 70,000, all the way down here to, I mean, what was it, roughly like 15, 16,000 at its low? Uh, and so when we're understanding a trend reversal, I think some of the most important things to look at are, is it forming higher swing lows or is it forming lower swing highs? And then also, where are our major moving averages at? Are we still in a death cross? Have we reversed to a golden cross? Are we closing candles above the 200 day moving average? Um, things like that. And so for a long time, Bitcoin was forming lower highs and lower lows upon every swing attempt. Um, so that just basically meant that it was continually falling. Now, what we have here and what we've reversed from is actually going from lower highs and lower lows and being below the 200 day moving average inside of a death cross. What we had actually was over here. I would say the clear reversal point was in January, around January 13th of this year where we popped up from 15,000 up above the 200 day moving average for the first time in like a, almost a year, uh, Bitcoin was able to pop above the, two, the 200 day moving average 
and back to its primary resistance. Now, this was nothing new because there was no former high hit. Um, but what it did here was it retested this former high, broke through the 200 day moving average, and then immediately tested it as a support where it saw a massive rise in price uh, from around 20,000 immediately up to about 30,000 in a matter of a week and a half. So we saw a 50% move in Bitcoin. It moved about $10,000 in less than two weeks. It was a really, really big uh, mark because here, what it did was it formed a higher swing low. It closed above a major moving average. It formed the golden cross immediately afterwards. It set a new higher swing high um, with this over here and it broke through a previous consolidation zone. Now, this was a big mark for Bitcoin because again, the whole time that Bitcoin had been making its move down here, it was using previous support as resistance and the cycle just repeated over and over and over again all the way down and so now that this cycle was broken and bitcoin was breaking into previous consolidation into previous resistant levels uh that is a big move for bitcoin and then it's closing on top of that closing on top of the 200 day moving average it's using former support or former resistance as support uh, and then it has the golden cross and now a bull flag so i think there's a lot of evidence on this front and if we want to get even more granular with this the second things that we can look at or i would say the second and the third thing is if we zoom out to the weekly chart on the macd and the rsi we can look and see that every single time in every market uh, cycle in the past of Bitcoin, um, whenever the RSI, or excuse me, the MACD in this scenario, has formed three higher swing lows, it has always resulted in a market bottom. It doesn't matter if it was the Corona crash, and I'm gonna switch this over here, ah, it's not gonna work. Um, it doesn't matter if it was the Corona crash of 2020 over here, we had three higher swing lows, signified the bottom. It doesn't matter if it was the 2018, we had three higher swing lows, signified the bottom. It doesn't even matter if it was all the way back in 2014. Three higher swing lows signified the bottom in all of these major market cycles. And when you look at where we are currently at, guess what we are seeing, or rather we have already seen, is three higher swing lows over the course of 2022. So um, the other thing that we can look at here is if we look at the RSI. There is a very clear cut, and if you've been around on the channel for a while, you've probably seen me reference this. There's a very clear cut point where the markets like to bottom and top out at. And you're gonna see these lines, they're gonna make sense in just a moment. Um, but there's a very clear cut point where the RSI typically shows, hey, market cycles top out around here and market cycles bottom out around here. Uh, and there's almost no exception to this. Again, you look the 2014 cycle, the 2018 cycle, the 2022 cycle, even in the wake of the Corona crash, which was outside our normal market cycles, there is a clear cut pattern that Bitcoin has here. Uh, and then if we wanna take this one more step further and look at this on an even more zoomed out time scale, we can look at it on the monthly. And so what the monthly does is again, it really provides information at scale about the bigger picture of any asset. So when we're looking at the monthly time scale, we can see that Bitcoin continually tops out at the same place, almost every single bull market and almost bottoms out at the same place, every bear market. Again, we go all the way back to the 2014 cycle, the 2018 cycle, the 2022 cycle. Every four years, it um, tops out and bottoms out at almost the same area. And we see this in the bear markets, one, two, three, the past couple of bear markets, and we're already bouncing off of this level from our immediate bear market. So I say all this because we are making the evidence for the bulls here saying a market bottom is in, and the evidence is clear for that, right? Well, you know, not so much, right? We have a lot of factors that I think people want to consider here, such as the larger economic environment for crypto. Uh, there's a lot of people that say crypto has never been through a true and tried depression, kind of like what the U.S. is seeing at the moment. Um, and then you also have things like inflation going crazy and the government being, being unstable and the stock market crashing and jobs kind of uh, waxing and waning and oil prices are really high. And then there's the brink of war and there's there's all these things that people are trying to say that we need to focus on. And it could tank the price of Bitcoin, which is true. You know, there's definitely a lot on the immediate horizon. Uh, however, uh, I think we just can kind of 
have to focus on the things that are in control and the data that we can quantify. And that seems to make people uncomfortable because they can't quantify a lot of data that Bitcoin has never been through before, like several of those factors that I just talked about. Uh, then you look at other factors um, like the current potential head and shoulders on Bitcoin. So there's a lot of people that are saying that this bear market cycle is not done um, and that there could be a potential head and shoulders on Bitcoin. So let's talk about that next. So if we are going to draw a head and shoulders here, let's get out our head and shoulders tool. And this seems to be the general consensus about what people are seeing on this head and shoulders here. Oops, there we go. So it seems to be from what I've seen from the bears um, and people talking to me about it is this is shoulder number one, right? We peaked up from around the shoulder line of 26 and a half thousand. It went all the way up left shoulder to about 29 and a half thousand, came back down to the shoulder line, hit a new peak or a head of around 31 and a half, back to the shoulder line, back up to around 29 and a half to 30,000, then back down to the shoulder line. So this seems to be the head and shoulders that people are talking about here. And we'll delete the tool to just make it a little bit more simpler, but it seems to be left shoulder, head, right shoulder, and now people think it's going to just tank through the floor. Now, one of the things that I wanna to bring to everyone's attention is before I continue to talk about this head and shoulders, is if we go all the way back to 2018, oops, I'm gonna switch my chart over here because I have a lot of stuff on here. If we go all the way back to 2018, all the way over here, I wanna to bring to everyone's attention that when this move happened and we went from 6K to 3K, everyone was saying prepare for the next major move down we are going to see a one thousand dollar bitcoin and you need to prepare for it everything's going to tank um, and this is not the end of the market i don't know if any of you remember that if you weren't around in the market cycle then i sure remember it everyone in their mom was calling for a one thousand dollar bitcoin and guess what it never happened and all those people were wrong so i want to remind everyone that in a bear market it is the cool thing to be a bear. It's a cool thing to make these wild downside predictions. And it's just easiest to be bearish because the trend is your friend. And that's what a lot of these people do. They get clicks, they get views, they get notoriety from being extra bearish. And they can just be like, oh, it's the, it's the new cool thing. It's the new safe thing to just be a bear without ever telling you what the evidence for the bear to be without creating a bit of a straw man fallacy now. You know, one could definitely say that maybe I'm creating a straw man. Um, however, I feel like I'm trying to mention as much of the information as I am privy to. So that kind of like raises the question here, you know, ultimately, what does it look like? What does the bulls versus the bears look like here? Well, yeah, I think you do kind of have to acknowledge the fact that maybe there is a head and shoulders here and maybe the global economic conditions that are surrounding every kind of soft asset market, whether it's crypto or stocks or whatever it is. Um, I think that that is something that has to be paid attention to. Um, because, you know, if one market tanks, you know, obviously, we've seen that there's a bit of correlation, even as it is starting to deviate here in recent months where crypto and stocks and a lot of these other things are seeing independency from one another and they're not nearly as correlated as they used to be um if, if everything happens and everything goes bad and um, things really go wrong then the main ideology is that people want to save money they want to hoard money in a worst case scenario and they're not going to want to throw it into onerous assets um doesn't matter what kind they are and so that seems to be the main kind of I would say the main argument for the bears here. Um, now, I will say, technically speaking, I think that the argument for the bulls is significantly stronger than it is for the bears. We looked at a lot of the data here. I think the main argument for the bears um, is that maybe that there is a head and shoulder or that volume and liquidity are low and that it's not yet time for a bull market. I think that's, again, the main argument for the bears is maybe a lack of volume, a lack of liquidity, maybe a head and shoulders, things of that nature. Other than that, the I would say the vast majority of technical analysis is pointing that this is a bull flag and, it's, and it wants to see Bitcoin break out here. The more evidence of the fundamental side is where things start to push bearish. So this is where those two parties come up. Again, I think a lot of the people who favor fundamental analysis are the ones saying, 
we are going to move lower. A lot of the people who favor technical analysis are going to say that Bitcoin will probably break out here. Maybe it retests its new highs or its yearly highs of around 30 to 31,000. Maybe it goes a little bit above that before seeing a real pullback. But that seems to be the way that I conceptualize things here is again, the people who are favoring the fundamental analysis in the current state of the crypto market they think that crypto can go lower for the most part. And for the people who favor the technical side, I think that there's a lot of evidence to point that things are looking, you know, not so bleak. You know, is it perfect? No. Um, but the crypto market as a whole here, especially the big caps, you look at Bitcoin and even Ethereum, they're not that bad. And you look at things even like Bitcoin dominance and Bitcoin is at a really, really high point of Bitcoin dominance. In fact, the highest point that it had been in since july or june of last year almost a year ago so bitcoin dominance is really high um you know some of these altcoins are beaten down but other ones are doing great you look at agix you know a lot of the layer twos immutable x matic optimism uh cosmos you know a lot of these ones are doing just fine this year so that is my final thing so we put all the evidence against one another which way am i leaning I will say that my game plan here, I cannot give you financial, legal, tax advice, any of that. But for me personally, in this scenario, again, I wanna go back to that idea of 2018 when everyone in, it was the cool thing to call for a lower Bitcoin price. Uh, and it never happened. We've been in an extended, we've been in an extended bear market now. I'm tripping over my words and a little bit of frustration. We've been in an extended bear market here for a long time now. It is cool for people to tell you that it's gonna go lower. Um, but it is increasingly less likely. Uh, I will never understand why people say not to buy the dip and why they say to sell high and, or excuse me, why they say sell low and buy high, um, but there will continually be people to encourage that. I believe in the idea of buying fundamentally strong assets that I think are gonna survive a bear market and go into the next bull market. I believe buying them at a low price is one of the smartest things that you that I can do. Again, I can't give you advice. Um, so that's what I'm focusing on. That's all I can control here is what the evidence I believe is pointing to and which projects I truly believe are gonna survive into the next cycle uh, and which ones are gonna be able to profit heavily off of that. Um, and that's gonna go into, I guess, a side video here um, that we'll get into right after the analysis side of things. But that's the way that I'm playing this. I'm looking at fundamentally strong assets and altcoins um, like Bitcoin, you know, Ethereum, and I won't get into all the altcoins that I'm interested in, um, but there are a number of altcoins as well that I'm just looking to accumulate on the dip. I'm not too concerned with if crypto falls another 5, 10, 15, 20%, um, because I do believe personally that a bottom is in. So long as no crazy black swan event happens here and everything gets annihilated and some crazy market crash, Again, I think that, that the market bottom is in, and there's evidence to point towards that. Does that mean it's only going to be up? Absolutely not. But I am looking at fundamentally strong assets that are going to survive. So even if the market does go down another, you know, whatever it is, 15, 20%, I'm not going to panic. In fact, one of the things I've said in previous analysis is that Bitcoin could pull back all the way to its 200 day moving average, another 16 and a half, 17% to the downside, and it could be a completely healthy move. Um, so that's just another thing to kind of look at here is that even if the market does crash 16%, there's going to be bears saying, aha, we got you. We knew it was going to be bearish. But in reality, we already saw something like this happen where Bitcoin pulled back from its major resistance all the way back to the uh, 200 day moving average. It was a drop of around 23% and it immediately rallied almost 50% afterwards. So who's to say that the exact same thing can't happen again, where the crypto market drops, you know, another 16, 17% only to rally maybe another 50% yet again to its next consolidation zone that is even higher. So that is my just current thoughts on the market. I am personally looking to accumulate just a, a little bit of, uh, of crypto that I think are going to survive this. So again, it's going to be the mainstream cryptos like Bitcoin and Ethereum, and I'm not going to get into all the altcoins that I that I love. Sometimes I talk about them on the channel. Um, but that's going to wrap us up for this video, everyone. And before I go, I actually lied. That's not it for this video. There are a number of, of cryptos that are doing really, really well out there. Um, but something cool that happened this morning was DeFi projects that are built on Ethereum scaling solutions like Starknet, uh, I guess Starknet specifically here, hit $10 million. 
So why do I bring this up? $10 million is no small, or it is a rather small amount of money in the in the great world of uh, crypto and economics. But this raises a valid point that I've been thinking about. Um, layer two platforms are going to be very important in the next bull run. And we're seeing a lot about them in the news. So I just wanted to bring this up before I left here. If you stuck around this long in the video, then you know, congratulations. I think this is gonna be a really, really valuable piece of information because we have seen that even in a bear market, Ethereum gas fees are very, very high. And even with the launch of a single meme coin, Ethereum gas prices were like over a hundred bucks uh, pretty consistently. And that's just too expensive for the average person. So how do we make our way around Ethereum gas fees until sharding is enabled in roughly two or so years? Well, the way to do that is to go to a layer two. So if you want to join um, and kind of learn more about this, definitely check out this week's newsletter. And there's going to be a lot going on. So again, I just think that layer twos are going to play a big part in the next bull run. Maybe I'm a little biased because I own a couple, but I do think layer twos have potential here, especially as gas prices get a little bit crazy. Um, and then this was an ironic article, but you know, we're running out of time. Um, no need to rip on XRP here, but it's basically just saying that <laughs> I had to throw this one in here. It's basically just saying um, that XRP is not needed to operate the services that they offer. And they acquired a, a central bank digital currency platform and the private ledger is based on the XRPL, but does not require XRP to operate. So it's just a little bit of an ironic thing that is happening that, you know, everyone's saying that XRP needs to be used for this purpose, but in order to operate it, it doesn't have to necessarily use XRP. Anyway, um, beside the point, just my, my little rip ski at the end of the video. I hope all of you did enjoy. If you did, again, all that I ask is that you, <laughs> you hit the like button, you hit the subscribe button. I guess that eliminates, I'm thinking back on this, that probably eliminates one coin that I am not owning at the moment. Um, but again, all that I ask here is that you smash the like button, you smash the subscribe button, and we'll be back with a couple more videos here in the next week or so. So again, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to all of you soon.